Welcome to Douglas County News Exchange. I'm your host, Sabrina Hayes. Today's show features some special people building wheelchair ramps for deserving citizens, a distinguished recognition of Douglas County's rideshare program, a look back at the past years of the annual Hydrangea Festival, and everything you need to know about this year's festivities. All of this and much more on Douglas County News Exchange. We start the show with an award given to our rideshare program for taking cars off of the busy interstate system. Elaine Mayo of Georgia Commute Options presented the award to Director Gary Watson and Assistant Director Davida Walker. Here's that presentation. Hello, my name is Elaine Mayo. I'm with Georgia Commute Options, and I am here today to award the Douglas County Board of Commissioners with the Platinum Partner Certificate. They have at least 20% of all of their commuters take an alternative to driving alone, and so we are recognizing their efforts in reducing traffic congestion and improving air quality. Congratulations. Elaine, thank you very, very much uh, for this recognition. We're thrilled to partner with Georgia Commute Options to, to try to find transportation options uh, for our residents and to try to find ways to eliminate a few cars off the, the roads and expressways in metro area in, in Douglas County. And moving forward, we hope that we can do even better in this regard. And thank you again. The Penny McHenry Hydrangea Festival is celebrating its 10th year. Founders Suzanne Hudson and Jerry Farmer sat down to talk about their favorite moments and what you can expect to see and enjoy at this year's festival. Take a look. What are we doing here today, by the way? <laughs> well, you know what we're doing. We always do the Hydrangea Festival. <laughs> I just can't believe it's been 10 years. 10 years. June. What was your favorite? The first festival um, that we had um, was Pennies from Heaven. And um, that name, uh, our flower show committee came up with that name. And how did they do that? Well, Penny McHenry was a special lady. And um, she received a hydrangea because of the death of her daughter and then started propagating hydrangeas and just fell in love with hydrangeas. And because of that, she started the American Hydrangea Society. We kind of named it after her and she was a friend of mine and loved coming to Douglas County and loved the gardens here, so we thought it was appropriate. Well, the pennies from heaven, it was just great. Everything had to do with pennies and the flower show was themed, everything was pennies from heaven. So what, what was your favorite? I don't know. When I walked in and saw after we finished the one that was called Blushing Bride, that was pretty spectacular. In that courthouse, you have to do something kind of overscaled because it's a big rotunda. That was, that, that was a beautiful one too. Every, every last one of them really have been gorgeous, but you just it's hard to choose your favorite. Mm -hmm. Well, so let's just, let's just do a little trivia about that flower show since we're talking about it. Uh, I have some notes here that oh, I want to make sure that I, I want to ask questions you some, you're going to ask I, me. I am, I'm going to ask you some questions. Some questions. All right, so how many um, horticultural entries are in the flower show? Well, last year we had over 500, and that means people in our community, citizens in our community, bring flowers, blooms, uh, shrubs, hosta leaves. I even brought a, a weed one time. <laughs> And it won a blue ribbon, by the way. Oh, oh my goodness. Because the, 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 I didn't even know what it was. It was growing in the garden, and I took it, and, and uh, they named it, and uh, I, I got a blue ribbon. It was the only weed, I think, is the reason I got a blue ribbon. <laughs> in that category. In that category. <laughs> Are all the interests hydrangeas? Oh, no. There's a rose category, a hosta category, a shrub category, trees. So you can just bring anything from your yard. All right, and so what else happens at the flower show? Is it just horticultural entries, or what else is going on there? Well, when you walk in, there's the spectacular staging that we talked about. So that carries the theme of the flower show, whatever. And this year, it's ocean, and the theme is making waves. And making waves 
means what you can do for your community to make it better. So at the museum, we've got a bunch of waves and you can come right down what you want to do to make your community better. That's awesome. So when you walk in, you see the theme. And then uh, the lower level of the courthouse is completely filled with the uh, horticultural entries. And then the third floor has table settings. And those table settings, again, are themed to the hydrangea for that year. So this year, all the tables will be themed to an ocean theme. So what else is uh, a part of the flower show other than that? What I want to say about that flower show is when we first came up with the idea of the festival, I had been in a garden club for 20 years and we had never done a flower show. But it, luckily in our county, we had a, a lady named Betty Benson and she had done flower shows most of her life. And she lived here and she was gracious enough to help us start a flower show, which there's a rule book this thick on everything that you gotta do, because it is a standard flower show, and it is judged by judges from all over our state. One of the things while we're talking about the flower show, and talking about Betty Benson, and um, she actually wrote um, the rules for our flower show, mm -hmm. which is called a schedule, which I can never remember that. But anyway, um, every year that I, this flower show um, has been done, uh, has won top state and national awards, if I'm not mistaken. Am I, am I correct You on are that? correct. And then um, this year, uh, of course, it runs a year behind. And we just learned this week that our um, flower show from last year, which was our ninth annual, won top awards once again in its category. So mm -hmm. we just have to toot our horn a little bit. So those in the community that have not been to a flower show, they need to make sure they go inside the courthouse mm -hmm. to see that flower show. I think you asked me earlier um, what um, I think one, what was my favorite thing or what I want, what's one of the things um, that this festival has done and I think one of the things while we're talking about this is um, that we've encouraged citizens and businesses to plant hydrangeas mm -hmm. to really beautify our community and it's an ongoing process and our, our residents will notice that Freedom Island there are hydrangeas planted around the courthouse there are hydrangeas planted and people continuously plant those and so we want that to continue on and I think in your garden you have how many? Uh, Hundreds. I, yeah, hundreds. Yeah. I don't know. I have about 120 or so if I include the pot. So that's another thing we need to talk about. Uh, folks, and you taught me this, um, they don't have to be planted in the ground. They don't. You can have them on your deck or your porch or whatever. Just put them in pots. And if they're mm. not happy where you've got them in a pot, you can move them. You don't have to <laughs> dig them up, which is a nice thing. <laughs> it's a little easier. Right. All right. Well, let's talk. We've talked about the flower show. All right. Uh, is there some place where people can purchase uh, items or... Oh, we have a wonderful market. You know that. I know. I just wanted you to tell <laughs> We us. have a mo wonderful market. It's in, a, outside the courthouse, and it's not really an arts and crafts market. It has plants. We have a, several plant vendors. It's a more gardening market and fine arts. Lots of artists and anything for your garden and lots of hydrangeas to buy. That's great. But it's a huge market right outside the courthouse, and all that is free at the courthouse. So. Well, let's talk about, uh, that's the new courthouse. We mm -hmm. call it the new courthouse and the old courthouse. The old courthouse is really the home of the uh, Douglas County Museum of History and Art. But um, there's some things going on there as well. So, so let's you, talk about you gotta that. come to the museum because we have um, two great things to show you. We have a entire exhibit of miniature gardens. Some people call them fairy gardens, right. but we call them miniature gardens. And they're all down that beautiful glass hall and um, in other areas of the museum, but they're, they can be this big or they can be this big, right. but they are like in a container. Right, and again, you can go on the website if you're interested in doing that, and there's information on there, and we welcome uh, participation in that. And it can be, very, it can be all kinds of uh, concepts, um, and it can be in a little wheelbarrow, it can be in a pod, it can be anything. And it can be a plants. Teacup. It can uh, be in a teacup. And so. it can be plants, or it can be little miniature figures. It can be anything. Mm -hmm. So, well, right. I want to tell you what else is at the museum. All right. Uh, this year we're kicking off a Douglas County film trail, and it is a trail that you can pick up a brochure and follow about sites where TV shows and movies have been filmed in our community, which That's, is kind of exciting. It is, and and we have more of those than probably most people realize. Right. Uh, so we the, really are becoming kind of a little film um, mecca. You know, uh, right. Like so, but the gallery has been transformed into um, artifacts and 
memorabilia from those movies, TV shows, and films. So you're going to enjoy going in that gallery and seeing what all was filmed here. All right, so we've taught master gardeners, we've taught miniature gardens, uh, garden tour. We have a garden mm, tour. We do. That's kind of how it got started was yeah. the garden tour. And I'll tell you what was the scariest thing for me. <laughs> I remember this. <laughs> oh, I mean, we worked an entire year we did. with the whole committee every uh, month or so having a meeting and plan and this festival. And we still do that, by the yeah. way, year round, every month we have a meeting. Yeah. But And plan this festival, and then we didn't know if anybody was going to come. Yeah, I remember. Oh, that was a scary part. It was frightening. So it was kind of exciting that morning. Everybody was up at 7 getting everything ready, and the garden tour was going to start at 9, I nine, believe. Right. And at 9 o'clock, we looked at the gardens, and there were lines waiting to come in. We're so and that excited. was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> we're so excited. Mm -hmm. that, that was awesome. So we have um, private gardens on, on tour, mm -hmm. and there is a charge for that. Most events are free for the festival. Mm -hmm. Actually, all the events are free, except for the garden tour, and it's $25 per person. So. But I want to say, too, one of the most meaningful things mm -hmm. to me was um, the people who come, and they came from everywhere, and those people, well, there's one couple, they, and they've brought people with them every time, but they have been since the first year, and they come from Tennessee. And they're precious, yes. And they're precious, and we look forward to seeing them every year. So the people have been very meaningful to come to our county. Well, uh, one of the, there were several objectives when we started this that we presented to the city and the county, and one was to beautify the community, which we've talked about. The other one was to generate tourism, and that's a perfect example. This couple have been every year. We look forward to seeing them again, and we actually have generated visitation from um, over 55 Georgia cities, mm -hmm. Um, over 17 states 17 states and even three foreign countries so mm -hmm. that was another objective so um, we want to keep growing this uh, we don't have the volume that we like from those areas but obviously we like people from our community as well mm -hmm. but then we'd like to, to bring in tourism so that was another objective that we had um, <clears throat> the garden tour <coughs> excuse me uh, is $25 but then there's um, yes, free gardens. several free gardens right. the art center has a beautiful butterfly garden right. that the master gardeners have done and there's an entire actually butterfly trail you can pick up a brochure and visit all the butterfly gardens right and then there's um, um, the trail behind the courthouse yeah the nature trail the nature behind trail the behind the courthouse so there's several things mm -hmm. um, that are that's free also all right the events actually are from nine to five every day mm -hmm. except for the flower show we need to make sure the viewers uh, realize the flower show on Saturday only uh, will open at one o'clock mm -hmm. and the reason for, it's open from one to five on Saturday and then nine to five on Sunday because the judges are in there uh, on Saturday mm -hmm. morning judging um, I so. told you about that book I'm telling you. We have to adhere to so many rules and those judges take all that time going around judging every little thing that we do for that flower show. Well, just think to, ju to judge 500 horticultural entries yeah. is, is um, huge within itself. Well, there's 40 judges that come from all over the state. And actually, um, we actually, I think, have a waiting list for state judges mm -hmm. because our flower show is really so awesome. They want to come here mm -hmm. to judge the flower show. So I just want to say, come to the festival. You won't believe it's in your community and enjoy it. It, it is an awesome um, thing to experience, for sure. Once again, our school system has been winning awards in various areas. The Counselors of the Year for the Douglas County School System were named on March 28th. For the first time, the Counselor of the Year Award was named in memory of Emma Laguerre Jordan, a beloved counselor in the school system for many years. The 2016-2017 Elementary Counselor of the Year is Cedric Slay from Sweetwater Elementary. Middle School Counselor of the Year is Jaslyn Dukes from Turner Middle School, and the High School Counselor of the Year is Pamela Cummings from New Manchester High School. Counselors are nominated by teachers, administrators, and staff from across the district. The 2017 Region 5 6A Athletic Director of the Year comes from Alexander High School. On March 28th, Chris Small, was presented the award at the Georgia Athletic Directors Conference in Savannah. Many of you know that Mr. Small devotes many hours to our athletic programs to ensure support for our coaches and players, said Alexander Principal Nathan Hand. He went on to say, for several years now, the Alexander High School athletic programs have flourished under his leadership, guidance, and sacrifice. 
While Chris is certainly deserving of this award, this is a celebration and a proud moment for the entire school. Several students from Douglas County won honors at the Georgia Science and Engineering Fair, which was held in Athens March 30th and April 1st. In the junior division, Isabella Nail from Chapel Hill Middle School won second honors for her project, Water Purification for Developing Countries. The following students won fourth honors, Rajul Patel from Chapel Hill Middle School for How Can Magnets Be Used to Create Clean Electricity? Alexa Robles from Yeager Middle School for her project, Jello Dermis, and Kyle Vanderwhite from Chapel Hill Middle School for Is the Price Right to Keep Ice? In the senior division, Devika Dutt from Douglas County High School won second honors for her project, Demystifying Antioxidants Using Spectroscopy and Electrochemistry. The following Lithia Springs High School students won third honors, Blair Cowan and Nicholas Korzynski for investigating the viability of E. coli and A. aceti in simulated Venus environment, and Hope Lee for digging up the hidden truth. Two projects from Lithia Springs High School won special awards. Jaden Lamar and Anthony Russo won the Arizona State University Walton Sustainability Solutions Award for their project, Hashtag Textinic. Kenneth Thomas won the Naval Science Award, Senior Division, for his project, Innovating, Integrating, and Improving Avionic Security. Congratulations to the Douglas County School System for all of these honors and awards. Douglas County has a new attraction. Dozens of well-known movies and television shows have been filmed here, so a list of them and their locations have been mapped so that you can see them for yourself. The Douglas County Film Trail, as it is being called, was recently recognized by the Georgia House of Representatives, and here is Micah Gravely reading the resolution by the starting marker for the trail. Well, I'm uh, very happy to be here today. And a little bit of history, uh, it wasn't too long ago, uh, back in the early 2000s, that I was participating in cast productions right here in live theater in Douglas County. And so today, I'm able to stand here uh, with everything that's happened in Douglas County, the history of film in Douglas County, right between the site location for Stranger Things and the founder. And I was very honored this year in the 2007 legislative session to uh, present uh, our film, our local film uh, industry here in Douglas County, Colin Cash, with a resolution uh, on film day here in the state of Georgia. And I'd like to read that resolution just to tell you a little bit about Douglas, Douglasville's and Douglas County's amazing history in film. It says, recognizing the Douglas County Film Trail's efforts in promoting tourism and showcasing the county's famous film and television sites. Whereas Douglas County became involved in film industry productions with the local filming of Smokey and the Bandit in 1976. And since then, 36 television shows and major motion pictures, as well as countless commercials and independent projects have been shot in Douglas County. And whereas the Douglas County Film Trail is designed to encourage tourism by highlighting numerous areas across the community where popular films and television shows have been filmed. And whereas visitors to the Douglas County Film Trail can use digital maps or hard copies from Douglas County Welcome Centers and film offices to conduct semi-structured, self-guided to self tours of various film sites like the one we're standing by right here. And whereas Douglas County Film Trail is designed to leverage the popularity of the film industry along with the assets of Douglas County by attracting tourists to the community with popular film locations and promoting Douglas County to the film industry as an excellent location for new business. Now therefore be it resolved by the House of Representatives that the members of this body recognize Douglas County Film Trail for its efforts in enhancing tourism and by adding a new element of visiting popular film projects in sight in the community. By the clerk of the state of the, by the State House of Georgia, I'm happy to present this resolution to Colin Cash. And I will accept this, Micah, on behalf of the Douglas County Film Trail, which is a cooperative effort between the Douglas County Film Office, and that's housed in our Economic Development 
office, the City of Douglasville Convention and Visitors Bureau, and the Douglas County Tourism Office. Madam Chair, I would like to present Douglas County uh, in honor of Douglas County's Film Trail, Housed and Economic Development, the amazing things that Douglas County has been able to do in Douglasville specific with Stranger Things and the founder, uh, all the work that Colin Cash and Breezy Stratton and Chris Pumphrey do over at Economic Development. This film trail, I believe, is going to be an economic generator. It's going to bring tourism to Douglas County, and I'm honored to present this resolution commending the Douglas County Film Trail to you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much for this. Honor. Absolutely. This is absolutely an honor, and congratulations to Douglas County. Absolutely. We end our show with a group of volunteers who work hard to make sure that the needs of certain citizens in our community are met regardless of their financial situation. The United Methodist Churches in Douglas County frequently get together to build wheelchair ramps for those in need. This ministry has grown year after year. Here is an explanation of the program and how you can get involved. This is a uh, takeoff from our River of Life Youth Ministry Program, which we started back in 2014. River of Life is where kids come into the church, they housed at the church, they fed, they take a sack lunch out with them every afternoon. They work on elder people's houses that can't afford to get it done, and it's all done to them at no cost to them. And we started building some wheelchair ramps, and as a result of that, we have developed off with a ramp ministry. And uh, since 2015, we have built 44 wheelchair ramps, mostly in Douglas, Paulding, and Carroll County, and we have even built one in Tarboro, North Carolina, just a few weeks ago. We have gone as far south as Peachtree City, and we built a 48-foot wheelchair ramp for a man uh, down there that needed access out of his house. Uh, this particular one, one of the members of the uh, Bill team right here, uh, knows these people and contacted me and uh, I came out, made the preliminary drawings and decided which way we were gonna go with it, which would be best for them. And uh, we set up a bill date. I go get the material and bring it out to the job site. And uh, uh, we usually start around 7.30, 8 o'clock, meet at the church and head on out here. So uh, the wife of the house has fallen a couple times on these steps out here and we're going to eliminate that possibility where she won't be falling. Uh, she'll have handrails in which she can hold on to. We've been doing this and I've been involved with it now for about two years and I got heavily involved when I retired in 2015. I have been qualified as a saw man. They put me on the saw every time. I cut all the lumber and you know it's just an ongoing ministry. It's, uh, it's hard to really to describe it. We used to start in just a handful of us, and uh, it would be, uh, you know, we'd have to come back and finish during the week, but, you know, we've been blessed. God's blessed us. He always supplies the, the means and the resources for each round. God sends it to us. We go out and look at it. You know, we come back. We figure out what the material's going to cost, and if we've got the money to do it with, we do it. If we ain't, we'll tell them it, we'll get back with them in a few days, and, and we back with them. You know, before the day that we show up, we tell them we're going to invade your property. And we don't turn anybody away. If, if they can afford to pay it, we furnish all the labor. If they can't pay for all of it, we will pick up the difference. If they can't pay for any of it, we'll pay 100% of it. We have donors standing in the wings that are willing to pay 100% of the material cost, and we furnish all the labor. Anybody that needs a wheelchair ramp uh, through a friend, through themselves, or whatever, they can get in touch with me. They can reach me direct if they want on my cell phone at 770-377-8986. And any checks would be made out to New Covenant United Methodist Church and uh, just mark it for our uh, wheelchair ramp ministry. Uh, folks that, that can't afford it but are stranded in their house, we can give them the freedom to get out of the house and get back to a useful life again. We built one in Peachtree City back in January. A gentleman came outside and, and uh, thanked us for uh, the work that we had done, providing him the ramp, and his exact words were, we gave him his freedom back. It's all worth it. it it's, a, it's a mission through the, uh, through the church, 
and the fellowship is fantastic, but we have a blast doing it. Come on, Sugar Rush. Okay. You got it. Oh, Thanks so much for watching DCTV 23. If you need any additional information about what you saw on the show today, all you have to do is go to our website at celebratedouglascounty.com or email us at dctv23 at co.douglas.ga.us. Be sure to check out all of our shows here on your source for local news and entertainment. DCTV 23 is always on at Comcast Channel 23, AT&T Uverse, Channel 99, and online at dctv23.com.